So let's go back to Tejas and talk to Samantha. What's up, Samantha? Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are we doing? How's it going? Excellent. I'm good. And you? Yes, I'm good. Very cool. What's up? Okay, so my original question has changed a little bit. Okay. Um, I sent that question on a really rough day, and I've since then had a really great conversation with my husband. Walk me through um, your original question. Okay, so it was basically asking for practical tips on how to trust my husband after a pornography addiction. Okay, all right. Um, And that problem solved? (laughs) um, Sort of. I mean, it's not like (laughs) solved. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so Um, on to the next question. What's the next question? Okay, so... um, so basically I still, okay. So it's been about a year and a half since he's been clean from looking at anything. Okay. Um, and so, but I still struggle with my body image. And so I'm kind of looking for like tips or suggestions on how to deal with that or increase positivity with that. Um, and then I also, um, just wanted to mention that I feel like since all of it happened, I've kind of lost, um, it's been more than a year and a half since it came out. And there was also some like from when we dated. And so it's been like years um, of kind of struggling with this off and on. Um, so I, I feel like somewhere along the way I lost like the fun part of me. And I feel like it probably has to do with that. Um, and I don't really know how to get that back. Hmm. So I know that's a lot, but whatever we get to is fine. It'll all be beneficial. <laughs> no, that's good. I, um, let me see here. So this is a hard conversation to have, and here's why. Um, the only part of the conversation I can have is with you because he's not here. Okay? Right. And what makes this a challenge is... I can I can tell you some hard truths, um, mm-hmm. but I want you to acknowledge that I'm telling you this stuff because I love you and not because, and I care about you and your marriage, not because I'm just piling on. It's going to feel yeah. like a pile on when you're listening because I'd only have, if he was here too, I'd be piling on him, right? Does that make sense? So there's, it's not like I'm picking one over the other. So I only got one here, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that frames this. Walk me through your history. So I want to take him and put him in a box, in a drawer and close the drawer. Okay. Box closed. Okay. When did your body, when did you not like what you saw in a mirror begin? Um, probably around, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, sophomore year of college. I didn't get the freshman 15. I got the sophomore 15. Okay. Um, so I kind of around that time. This is before that. Um, I'd be willing to bet my truck's not very nice, but I'd willing be willing to bet my car. This is not about fifteen pounds gained your sophomore year of college when you were nineteen and twenty years old. That's correct. When did the story that you didn't look right begin? I mean, I guess. Who told you? When all. I don't. I don't know that anybody told me that. I am currently reading your newest book, um, and so I know there's like questions in there about, um, like, was your family like always on a diet and always talking about weight and stuff like that? And that is true for me, but it wasn't directed at me. It was mostly like my dad. So listen, that uh, was always that. Well, so I said that mean. Like, so listen. I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> You're um, fine. Children absorb their environment in a mainline fashion. Yeah. Okay. So I am working with a, a guy. Um, I'm losing weight, but not because I'd quote unquote need to lose weight. I'm trying to accomplish mm-hmm. a particular thing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm working with one of the top guys in the, in the country on this. And I'm also trying to dial in my nutrition. So I'm partnering with Dr. Norton's helping, right? So I'm, I'm talking to I have zero issues with my aesthetic, okay? Mm-hmm. My son, who's 12, I saw him grabbing parts of his belly the other day. <laughs> and he's a cross-country stud. He's very thin. 
And he started mm-hmm. asking questions. And I was like, whoa, 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 we're cutting this off right now. Okay. Because he picks up what's in the air and mainlines it as though this is him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whether somebody, and this is important, I, I, whether somebody said, you don't look pretty mm-hmm. or you're overweight, which is common, right? That people are, kids are told that all the time. Right. Or you are conscious, all, con, constantly around people who are always looking in the mirror saying, I don't look good enough. I need to do this. We can't go out here. I've got to eat this because I can't do this. I've got to mm-hmm. do that because I can't do this. That That's just what's modeled for you as you better be careful about what you look like because that has a direct correlation to how much and how well and how deep you're loved. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, in if you if you you may not have got there, but in the book we talk about there's stories that you were told, but there's also stories you were born into, mm-hmm. and that 15 pounds may have. And I again, I I don't want to harp on that because I think that may be too simplistic, but it may set off a cascade of stress response chemicals in your body that start sounding start sounding alarms saying you're not enough. Whoa! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! And yeah, then your body begins scanning the environment for places where you're not beautiful, places mm-hmm. where you're not seen, places where you're not loved. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then Knucklehead sets off those alarms. He sets off a wildfire with gasoline, right? Yeah. How did you stumble into his pornography addiction? <laughs> um, which time? <laughs> Yep. So, I mean, there's like three different times. Okay. Um, so twice when we were dating and then a third time after we were married. Um, so the first time was, uh, a conversation we were having, we were driving and he kind of like was testing the waters and seeing like what my reaction would be. And so he asked like, so I had known that he like struggled with it in the past. Um, and so he kind of like tested the waters by asking like, what would you do? Or what would you <laughs> say if that's, blah, 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 blah. That's the most 19 year old way to introduce like, so yeah. let's pretend. <laughs> well, yeah, we were in high you school. You walked yeah. in. And, so anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. here's the thing. So you stumbled, Gail had conversations about it, which led to another conversation. And so, and then here it is, right? So yeah. let's, again, let's put him back in the box and back in the drawer. Okay. When it comes to quote unquote body positivity, at the end of the day, I wish it was different than what I'm about to say, but you're going to have to make a choice to look in the mirror and decide I have value before and beyond aesthetics, before external beauty. I am lovable. I am worth being loved. And from the inside out, the words that I say have value and meaning. The things that I think are funny are actually funny. The people I like being with are actually people worth being with. And from that inside out, you then take on a stewardship. I'm a person who stewards their body. I'm a person who Mm -hmm. takes care of myself because I'm a person of value. It has to work that direction. You can never lose enough weight to make the inside of yourself feel okay. Yeah. Right? It's like you can't ever earn enough money to make yourself feel valuable. You can buy a lot of of solutions to problems, but you can't solve that inner gnawing, right? And so when you start, and again, you and I could sit down for a couple hours and probably peel back a ton of layers on this onion. You have to decide and choose, I am worth these things. And then you've got to look at your environment. And it may be that your husband cuts you off every time you have an idea or he rolls his eyes and goes, we're not going that way or I don't like that. Maybe not, maybe he's wonderful. But often body positivity I have found is linked directly to the strength and power of my voice. Okay. In relationship. Am I hit? Am I hitting home at all or no? Yeah, somewhat, yeah. Um, I mean, definitely making a choice to decide that I have value before and beyond what I look like. Okay. And I also, and this is, I don't want to be controversial, but there's a balance, right? 
There's also, I have to look in the mirror when I got up to 217 pounds, if you, like I wasn't healthy. Yeah. Right? right. And so I knew not that I'm not lovable and not that I'm wholly unattractive, but I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't doing the best for my body. And if I don't do the best for my body, I get grumpy and I get achy and I just want to watch TV instead of go play with my kids. And I get self-conscious and let's don't go to the pool. Let's don't go to the lake and let's, let's just sit at home. Right. So it has this down, it has this ripple effect all through everything. Right. Yeah. And so again, that's inside out. And then the stewardship part is, well, then cool. I'm just going to start taking care of my diet. I'm going to start taking care of moving my body. And then my body responds in time. But again, that's all secondary and third and fourth to the inner stuff, which is I'm worth getting up and exercising. I'm worth taking care of myself. And the body positivity yeah. comes from the inside out. The second part of this is, I don't think you've gone all in with, with this guy. Can I ask why yes. or like how? You're either waiting for another shoe to drop or you are still lining yourself up in this imaginary line of imaginary women and putting yourself number 76. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, oh, go ahead. Well, I just want to speak to the first thing. Um, so yeah, in about a year and a few months, I've had just recently, like we just had this conversation like a couple of days after I sent that email, so like end of June. And like, that was the first time since all of this that I've like been able to fully trust him for more than a day. Okay. Um, and so... Is is it because yeah, he's, if you take the pornography off the table, three different times you've said, this is an important value to me. And he has said, eh, I don't care. And so do you see how this is more about trust than it is pornography? Yes. Pornography is, is, is the value. Mm -hmm. I want to be your only one. But the part that is rattling your body is I've told you what's important to me and you've blown me off. You've said your needs are more important than mine. And when that's the case in a marriage, the boat sinks, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you are at a place where you say, I'm going to trust him. And by the way, trust is something you practice. I'm going all in. Trust is a practice. Yeah. And there's going to be mornings you wake up and you suddenly you have a hang of this or a feeling of that or a thought of this and you're going to have to choose I'm going to trust him until otherwise noted so I mean I, so the thing on that is like I like this is the most I've trusted him in a really long time but I'm scared to like tell him that I trust him because I'm scared to fully commit to that if you don't you will suffocate yourself and you will drown him this is a marriage where you've got one foot in and one foot out. Mm -hmm. You're playing married. And the problem is, is pornography, alcohol, working 98 hours a week. I'm convinced those are connection issues. Mm -hmm. And you start trying to heal that gap or duct tape over it or bandaid over that gap of disconnection that you both feel, by the way. Because he's married to a woman that has never trusted him. And whether he acknowledges this um, in, inside or he acknowledges it very concretely, there's something he thinks is wrong with him because she won't trust me. And he might be untrustworthy. Just with the pornography discussion, you've shown me him, him he's proven himself to be untrustworthy because he violated your values. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the conversation that needs to happen with your marriage is, are you in or are you out? And right now y'all are scuba diving and you just have part of the, of the snorkel in. Yeah. Because you're afraid there's like poison in the tank. <laughs> and so what you're going to do is you're going to guarantee that you suffocate underwater. 
No, you, I mean, you drown by mm-hmm. not wanting to breathe in the gas. And so what I would tell you is either come to the surface or trust that there's oxygen in the tank and breathe it. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. What's the... Do you trust you? Um... I mean, I... I do more than I have in the past. But I... Um... Yes, I think I think so. Maybe not completely. I just don't want to look like an idiot if it happens again. Even though I know like it has nothing to do with me. The only way forward is vulnerability. And vulnerable yeah. is animals rolling over and showing their bellies and saying, "You could kill me." I'm asking you not to. Yeah. And I wish that wasn't the case. That's the only way relationships work. Yeah. And I'd like to think that we were that way but I mean I guess not well if it makes you feel any better I've had several times in my 20 year marriage where I've had to do that I've had to check and I've realized oh my gosh I'm not all in anymore I'm partially in I'm playing a role and then my wife feels it and then she has to create a universe where she can exist in it because I have all the oxygen and I'm letting most of it go underwater Mm -hmm. see what I'm saying yeah. And so the course of marriage is over and over again, every couple of years, every few weeks, every decade, checking yourself and saying, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not all in anymore. I've made work my all in. I've made protecting my dignity my all in. I have made not wanting to get burned my all in. Whatever the thing is, I've made that my all in. But when I got married to you, I committed to us being all in. And so I'm coming back and saying, I'm sorry, and I'm going all in. And by the way, Samantha, you're well within your rights to say, I'm going all in. And if you violate my trust again, I'm going to go all out. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the middle ground that 95% of couples accept as normal. And you look around our culture of lonely, divorced, broken up, pornography addicted, alcohol addicted, Netflix addicted people who are just numbing their way through a crappy, miserable life. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of people scared to go all in. And there's people who went all in and got absolutely torched. What I'll tell you, that's the only way forward. Okay. And I know that's scary. Yeah, but I feel more ready than I ever have. Good. So here's what that looks like. This is less about what I want and more about what I need. Okay. I would love for you to spend some time with just Samantha, just by herself writing down, here's what I need in this marriage. I need somebody I trust. I need somebody that when I lay down a value, that they're with me on that, that we are wired together on values. And by the way, when it comes to something like pornography, expect your husband to screw up. He may screw up. And that doesn't mean all is lost. And that doesn't mean that's the end of everything. And it's a... If he comes to you and says, hey, I screwed up. That's him making it right. If you church check his search history a year from now and all of a sudden you look at this back, then now, now we got a problem because it's about the deception and the lying, right? And it's the same if he says, hey, I have a value that my wife, my wife is all in. That, and fill in the blank, right? This is about y'all creating a life together. One that we can say we're all in on. And that means letting go of this false security that you have that I'm going to keep one toe out. I'm going to keep one. I'm going to keep myself chained to this thing. And then I'm going to jump off the edge. You can't do it. You got to just jump. And that's the beauty of relationships. You do it together. And the scary part is you can get hurt. Or let me put it this way. You're going to get hurt. But man, 
when y'all both go in together, the beauty on the other side of that thing is something, the, the alchemy of y'all two working together can be something so much greater than you could have ever, ever imagined. And for what it's worth, you're worth that. You're worth that. <laughs>